Well, hello and welcome. This is Coach Meg. Today we're going to talk about the habit or habits of humility. This habit is one of our series on connection. Do you remember Charles Duhigg's book, The Power of Habit? He talked about keystone habits. Those are the habits that start a chain reaction in our lives that can reboot everything and over time transform everything. I wonder whether humility is a keystone habit for connection. Something to think about. I really like this quote from James Barry. Life is a long lesson in humility. So then why not get started now? Humility is interesting because it's a trait. Some of us have more of it than others, but it's also a state which changes its variable over time and across relationships. So that means it can be cultivated. There are around seven research labs working on humility today, and there are now measurements of humility. The most accurate time to measure humility is when we're under stress. It's also a lot easier to assess humility in others than ourselves. What is most certainly not humility is arrogance. It's as though you're wearing a sign that says, hey, hello, I'm better than you. I'm more competent. I'm more valuable. I'm certainly more important. And more than that, I've got superior moral values. The attitude of arrogance is a killer. It kills connection and it kills our influence. It leads to defiance. Someone might say, you just don't get me. Or it can lead to defeat, making people feel as though they're not good enough. Why should you be humble? As Maya Angelou says, people will forget what you said and they'll forget what you did. But people will remember how you made them feel. What is not humility is being paternalistic. Paternalism has to do with being like a father that usurps individual responsibility and the liberty of choice of his charges. What's also not humility is modesty. It's not about underestimating or moderating your estimation of your own skills and abilities. The research around humility is moving at a quick pace, and now we've got five elements that are agreed as the components of humility. Let's go through them one by one. The first is that you're satisfied with yourself. Your identity feels stable and secure. You know that you're a good person the way you are, and your identity feels stable. Your esteem is stable through life's ups and downs. Next, you've got an accurate, objective view of your competence. Your confidence is accurate. You don't exaggerate, you don't minimize. You've got an objective view of your strengths and of your limitations. You don't distort your confidence. You don't try to enhance yourself. Assume that you have more control over events than you truly do. You don't take more credit than is due, and you don't blame others for failures. Being humble depends on accepting your own limitations, seeing yourself as a work in progress. You make mistakes, and that's just normal. You accept your failings. You even feel self-compassion when you fail. You're open to learn from your failings, and you handle negative feedback pretty darn well. Okay, this one is where we're going to focus in terms of humility habits. How can you be more egalitarian? A quick path to feeling humble is to think about the size of the galaxy, all the stars in the sky. And maybe remember that you are one of 108 billion people that's ever been born. This is the habit that I lean on. Say to myself, in this moment, you and I are equal. We're both doing our best with the resources we have. Another path into being egalitarian 
is to remember that you and I have equal rights and worth. Another way to evoke the sense of equality is to sit together as equals at the same level, neither being above or below the other. Here's the fourth component of being humble. In the balance of self-interest and other interest, a good deal of the time, maybe half the time, you put others first. To quote C.S. Lewis, humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. And last, to be humble, we need to value other people. To add value to others, one must first value others. One way to send the message that I value you is the Zulu greeting, Saubonu, I see you. Now, a backdoor way to switch on your humility or boot it up is to switch on gratitude, to be grateful, to be thankful. And that all by itself makes you more humble. So when you sit down to engage another person, start with gratitude. I'm thankful for you. Then hunt for the good. Look for what's good in the other person. The sign of a beautiful person is that they always see beauty in others. What's good about them, their life force, their well-being, their determination to actualize, their contributions, their performance. There are lots of things to see that are good. Now, it's interesting that there are a lot of benefits to ourselves for being humble. They're really good for social bonds, especially for important relationships. Being humble is good for your health. It also, in a competitive environment, makes competition less stressful to relationships. Here's a study exploring the benefits of physicians' humility to their patients. Doctors are more attuned and empathetic when they're humble. Their patients are more engaged. The patients report better subjective and objective health. Patients are more satisfied, and there's more likely to be discussion of things a patient can do to promote their own health. So humility is good for others' health and engagement in their health. To sum up then, here's some benefits of being humble. You get a break from your self-concerns. You get to forget yourself. You improve connection and communication gets better. You generate more ideas, more doors open, your impact grows, and it even improves others' performance. When should you boot up humility? Anytime you're with other people. But don't forget, the really tough thing about humility is you can't brag about it. So pause the video for a moment and ask yourself, in the last week, how humble was I with others? Scale of one to 10, 10 is awesome. You might ask someone else to answer this question. How humble was I with you? in the last week. You might want to take some time to reflect, either alone or with a partner. When am I the most humble? When am I the least humble? Who's my role model for humility? And what's my motivation to cultivate habits of humility? That's all for today. Thank you from Coach Meg. Enjoy the habits of humility.